What's up guys, Denver Gamer back. Today we're taking a look at PCSX2 Part 2. In the first video I showed you guys how to set up your emulator, and in this video we're gonna take a look at what the best settings are and really how to optimize your computer. Now, all of your computers are different, and a lot of these games require different settings and tweaks, and I'll show you where to go look for that stuff, okay? In the bottom of this video, you will see I've put chapters in because I don't want you guys kinda nodding off. What the hell's Denver Gamer talking about? Hell? <laughs> Now we don't want any of you guys falling asleep on me, so that's why the chapters are there. Feel free to skip around to what section suits you best. In the description, I will also put in a link to the written guide. If you guys learn better by reading, it's there for you. You don't have to listen to me. There's a link for you. I will also link the forums, the developers pages, stuff like that. Anything and everything you guys need to fully understand the emulator as much as you can if I haven't answered your questions here. And I will also list the recommended requirements for your PC, not necessarily the minimum requirements, but the recommended ones that are listed on the PCSX2 wiki. No more blah, 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 blah. Let's get into it. As you can see, I have my PCSX2 emulator opened up here and I'm gonna cover up this guy because I wanna focus on the emulator. Across the top, you will see that there are several menus to choose from. You have system, CDVD, configuration, miscellaneous, debug, and capture. We are going to be doing everything within the configuration menu today. In this menu, we'll see emulation settings, the memory cards, plugins, slash bio selector, and a bunch of other menus. We're only going to really be going into two of these emulation settings and plugin slash bio selector below that there is video audio controllers dev nine. All those are accessible through the plugin menu. So it's kind of like there's two ways to access these same exact menus. Let's go into emulation settings first. Okay, these first two menus shouldn't matter to you guys as much. But the first thing I want to show you is there's multiple places where you can hover over a feature and a sub menu will pop up a little help menu with a description. Those are kind of buried throughout this. I wish there was kind of like an info button, but that's fine. You can hover over certain things and find stuff. All right. So basically these first two menus, like I said before, are intended for emulation accuracy issues. The default options are fine. Let's go down to GS. I believe that stands for graphics synthesizer. The disable frame limiting option, you probably won't use this, but you can use it to break the 60 frames per second limit. It's useful sometimes like the Okami intro, but not for most playthroughs. There is also the frame rate you can mess with, probably the most important being the PAL frame rate. It's pretty cool to be able to speed up PAL games, but you can run into lip syncing issues or music issues. There's also frame skipping. I highly do not recommend touching this. It can cause big graphical glitches in the games. Next is the GS window menu. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory. It's really up to you. The V-Sync option you could enable if there is visible screen tearing, but it can cause slowdown and input lag. Next is the speed hacks menu. You want to have enable speed hacks checked. And under other hacks, you want the enable INTC spin detection and weight loop detection boxes checked, as well as the micro VU hacks box checked. If your processor is quad core or better, you should probably check this MTVU multi threaded micro VU one checkbox as well. Real quick, I'm gonna show you a quick way to check how many cores your computer has. You can do that through Task Manager. Just press Control, Alt, and Delete all together, and that will bring up your Task Manager. Go into that and go under Performance, and you will see here that my PC has six cores, and you can see what type of processor it is right there on top. So very handy, very fast to, to check that. Last is game fixes. You really don't want to change anything in here. They are game specific. You don't want to touch these unless you find on the PCSX2 wiki that they want you to make one of these tweaks here. Otherwise, leave this untouched. Okay, we are done here. Just exit out and go back to the configuration menu and select plugins slash BIOS selector. Okay, under graphics or GS, you have three options. You have AVX2, SSE4 and SSE2. I have a Windows computer, which is pretty fast. I mean, for four years ago, but I use AVX2. And then SSE4 is a little slower and the slowest is SSE2. So I select AVX2. 
go ahead and open the configure menu. All right, a lot to go over here. We have the renderer. I have a Windows computer, so I use the 3D11 hardware renderer. Some games you may have to switch, or if you're using Linux, you will use a different renderer. As for the adapter, that's basically your graphics card or your GPU. Go ahead and select what you have. Under interlacing, you can leave this to auto, except for a few games. Now, what texture filtering does is it smooths out some images and surfaces. It can cause some games to look blurry, so you can play with it. I have mine set to bilinear PS2. For these two little checkboxes here, only check 8-bit textures and large frame buffer if a wiki tells you to. Both affect performance on your PC. It depends on the game and how much performance is affected. Under internal resolution, I like to use 1080p. I don't need it any higher. Definitely use a multiple, it goes up to 8x here. I would not ever recommend doing custom. It can cause your game to glitch out and stuff like that. Just remember, higher resolution means more work for your video card. Here's a cool one, anisotropic filtering. What that does is it sharpens and gives clarity to some surface textures that are a little farther away in 3D games, and it makes them look sharper. One of the games that's really noticeable in is Deus Ex. That does come with a price, of course. It can affect the frame rate and take up memory bandwidth from your video card. But I checked out some game capture on YouTube with the 16X, and although 16X and 8X can be negligible, it was really nice uh, playing Burnout. I saw some Burnout footage that looked really, really good in 16X. So if your computer can handle it, this is something you might want to put your resources into. Mip mapping, that fixes some texture glitches like in Ratchet and Clank, but you can leave that off of most games. CRC hacks, that stands for cyclic redundancy check. You can leave that to automatic. Helps with some games like Shadow of the Colossus, but it's usually just automatic. Date accuracy is actually not what you would expect. It improves rendering of shadow and transparency effects. Fast option is definitely recommended. Otherwise, turning it off is useful if you're targeting a maximum FPS or frames per second. Blending accuracy, I would leave that on basic. It affects some rendering effects in games like fog. All right, hardware hacks. You really don't need to go into this menu unless it's game specific. This is a complicated menu and more for tweaks to individual games. The wiki page I showed you before will have different tweaks for different games that have all types of small issues. This is where you fix a lot of those. If you are using a software renderer, you will want the left two check boxes, auto flush and mit mapping checked. And you can check this edge anti-aliasing. Of course it is like the other items, more encumbersome on your PC, so just play with it. And you will probably want the rendering threads set to two. Okay, the OSD menu, that stands for on-screen display. It lets you see how your graphics, synthesizer, frames per second, or emotion engine are holding up. Otherwise, you can leave it alone. Shader configuration, now that's a cool menu. I have FXAA shader, which helps with anti-aliasing. Uh, I have that box checked. You can also check shade boost, which actually allows you to brighten some games and play with the saturation and contrast. A very, very cool little menu is down here at the bottom, and it has a hotkey, F7, and during gameplay, you can put different shaders on your games. For instance, like scan lines or a couple other ones that make it look like a CRT. So it's kind of cool if you want that old school TV effect. Okay, let's get out of this and go over to the sound plugin or SPU2 configuration menu. There's not a lot to do in sound, but just to double check, you have interpolation. Number four, Cat Mole ROM is probably the best. It says slow on there, PS2 like slash slow. I have not noticed any slowness at all with it. So my computer hasn't had any problems with it. I think it's a little overkill to get into these disable effects processing and the D alias filter. The enable bug options is really for developers. Under module, I have Windows going, I will select X Audio 2 backend. That works very well. Under synchronizing mode, there's a very cool option if your computer can handle it, and that is the async mix option. Time stretch is what you would usually use. However, what async mix does is it breaks apart 
the audio emulation and the video emulation. So if your game starts lagging a little bit in frames per second, the audio will play seamlessly. It does say it breaks some games. I really haven't run into that. And there's the audio expansion mode for Windows users. You get a choice of stereo, quadraphonic, which would be four speakers or surround sound 5.1 or 7.1. I just use stereo here. Not a lot to really go over here, but it's worth a look. Let's go back to the plugin menu for a second. Now the joypad menu, we configured that in part one. So we're not gonna go over that again. There are four other plugins that are worth discussing. I think 99% of you guys will not use these, but it's cool to know what they are. CDVD is a plugin for using a physical disc. The USB plugin is not really anywhere close to being ready, but that would allow mouse, keyboard, and light gun support for some reason, mouse and keyboard. I'm not sure why you'd need it, but I, that's over my head. Firewire FW plugin, I think is for audio. And then there's the Dev9 plugin, and that does HDD and ethernet access, I believe. Ethernet being the more exciting about the two, so we could possibly get online play on private servers in the future. I think they're both in early to mid development. Don't forget about your BIOS menu here where you put your BIOS files. We went over that in the last video. And check out this folders tab. This is where you can set your cheats folders and your save states and snapshots and your logs and dumps. So another useful menu here. Now we're gonna go back to the main menu of the emulator and I wanna show you a couple more small menus and we're gonna wrap this up. Here at the main emulator menu, you have a capture menu. You can capture video and screenshots. You have a debug menu for developers and you also have a miscellaneous menu. And what's important in here is the about tab. And this will allow you to go see the website support forums and GitHub repository for updates and stuff like that. So very useful menus. The CU DVD menu, obviously went over this before. This is where you can select your ISOs. And on the system menu, if you boot the ISO full, it goes to the PlayStation menu. If you boot fast, it goes straight to the game. Down here are also cheats and widescreen patches. We'll probably get into that next video. And we'll close this out with a part three. Thank you so much for watching my video. I will have follow-up videos on PS2 recommendations. I'm hoping to get about four or five of those done to really recommend games that are awesome to play that a lot of people don't know about. Connect with me on social media. I have got TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. I've got a Facebook group I'm starting. I do have Patreon. If you want to support the channel, a dollar goes a long way. I'll have a link for that in the description. But most importantly, guys, help each other in the comments if you can, if you do have a lot of knowledge. Try to answer some questions for some people that might be new to this. Thank you so much, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next video.